Okay, in this next video what we're going to do is we're going to talk about implicit differentiation. Implicit differentiation is a technique that allows us to find the derivative of, of relations that are not necessarily functions. This is where y is not explicitly defined in terms of x. And when you have that situation, you can still find the derivative. And what you do is anytime you take the derivative of a variable containing y, sorry, I don't mean to write there, but anytime I take this variable of, of something containing y, like y to the fourth right here, what I have to do is I have to multiply by dy dx. The same thing there, and it gets more complex. These guys I won't multiply by dy dx. And then once I do that, once I find that derivative, then I isolate the dy dx on one side of the equation, and I solve for dy dx. So in this first example, I'm going to write the derivative of y fourth is 4y cubed. Since I took the derivative of y, I had to multiply by dy dx. I take the derivative of 3y, it's plus 3 times dy dx. When I take the derivative of minus 4x cubed, it's 12x squared. I don't multiply by dy dx because it's x, and that equals 5, because the derivative of 5x is just 5. Derivative of 1 is 0. Move the 12x squared over there. Um, uh, factor out the dy dx on the left hand side. So dy dx times 4y cubed plus 3 equals 12x squared plus 5. Divide by what's in parentheses. So dy dx equals 12x squared plus 5 over 4y cubed plus 3. And that's my derivative. Just a little bit different technique, and what you're going to do is you're going to find that the derivative dy dx is going to be defined in both x values and y values. You can still use that and write the equation of line tangent to the graph and stuff like that. Let's see, 12x squared plus 5. Oopsie. So my derivative dy dx, this is from the previous example, is 12x squared plus 5 over 4y cubed plus 3. find the slope of the tangent line, find the slope of the tangent line at 1, negative 2. I'm going to put 1 in there for x, and I'm going to put negative 2 in there for y. So it's going to be 12 times 1 plus 5 over 4 times negative 2 cubed plus 3. When I work that out, uh, on top I'm going to get uh, 17. And on the bottom I get uh, negative 29, so it's negative 17 over 29. And that's the slope of the line tangent to the graph at the point 1, negative 2. Finding the derivative can be more complex. Um, oh, sorry, not, not in this particular one. This is a pretty straightforward one. This is the equation of a circle. Um, I can find that derivative. It's going to be 2x, don't multiply by dy dx, plus 2y times dy dx, and that equals 0. Solve that for dy dx. So dy dx is negative x over y. And that is the derivative of a circle that is centered at the origin, always. The derivative of a circle is centered at the origin. Well, the derivatives get more complex is when I have something like this. And I have a term that's 4xy cubed minus x squared y. This stuff is pretty straightforward. But these ones are hard. And the reason why they're hard is I have an x times a y. I have x times a y cubed and x squared times y. Those become more difficult because I have to apply product rule. Then I have to make this order to distribute to the 4. Then I have to make sure to distribute the negative. Then I've got to combine all my, uh, all my terms that are w uh, dy dx. So let's look at this. First one, pull the 4 out front. The derivative of x is 1 times y cubed. I don't multiply by dy dx because I did not take the derivative of x. I did not take the derivative of y plus the derivative of y cubed is 3y squared times dy dx, because I took the derivative of y, and then it's times x because of product rule. Same thing with that second term, minus parentheses, the derivative of x squared is 2x times y, plus the derivative of y is dy dx times x squared. <laughs> And then the other ones are plus 3x squared minus 5, and that equals 0. I have to distribute a 4. I have to distribute a negative. Um, so I'm going to get 4y cubed plus 12xy squared times dy dx. 
minus 2xy minus x squared dy dx plus 3x squared minus 5 equals 0. I'm going to keep this term and this term on the left hand side and I move everything else over to the right. So I'm going to get dy dx, factor out that dy dx, so dy dx times 12xy squared minus 2xy not 2xy, sorry about that, just made a mistake it's x squared and that equals, I'm going to move that 2xy over there move that minus 4y cubed over there minus 3x squared and then it's going to become plus 5 and then divide by what's in parentheses and that's my derivative dy dx equals 2xy minus 4y cubed minus 3x squared plus 5 over 12xy squared minus x squared just got to be really neat with your work. You got you to work hard at it. You find all the basic derivatives. Careful with the positives and negatives and distributing and all that stuff. <coughs> um, I can use, I can find the equation of line tangent to the graph. In this particular case, I have a, a, an ellipse. I have 9x squared plus 4y squared equals 40 at the point 2, 1. Find the derivative, 18x plus 8 y times dy dx equals 0. Solve for dy dx and equals negative 18x over 8y or negative 9x over 4y. Plug in the point 2, 1 and the slope of that tangent line is negative 9 times 2 over 4 times 1 or negative, what is that, 18 over 4, 9 halves. And then write the equation of the line tangent to the graph the same way we have before. The only difference is that I just had to plug in x and y into my derivative to get that slope. And then the final example I have for you in this is when I have to find the second derivative. And this gets to be a real challenge. Find the second derivative of implicitly is a real challenge because you got to use the first derivative and then there's a ton of algebra simplifying. Find the first derivative, no big deal. This derivative of this is going to be 10x minus 4y times dy dx equals 0. Solve that for dy dx. And I end up with 10x over 4y. Or I'm going to write it this way, 5 halves times x over y. You'll see in a minute why I wrote it that way. I reduced the 10 over 4 to 5 halves. X over Y, I want it that way because I'm going to take the derivative of X over Y, and when I take the derivative of X over Y, what's going to end up happening is I have to use quotient rule. So my second derivative, I keep the 5 halves out front. The derivative of X, the derivative of the numerator is 1 times Y. Don't multiply that by dy dx. Minus the derivative of Y is dy dx times X. So it's X times dy dx over y squared. Right here, I have to replace this with the first derivative, with this whole thing. So it's going to be 5 halves times y minus x times 5x over 2y over y squared. Multiply this x, so I'm, I still have that 5 halves out front. Wow, that's bad. That's a 5 halves. Sorry. I think it, my pen is just getting tired. All right. So it's. Let me try a different pen. Maybe that will help. Or not. Okay, so 5 halves stays out front. In my parentheses, I'm going to have y minus, when I multiply that x out, I'm going to get 5x squared over 2y 
over y squared. Do this subtraction right here. Common denominator is 2y. So 5 half stays out front. My denominator becomes 2y cubed. My numerator is going to be 2y squared minus 5x squared. And then if we get to that point, notice that this numerator is similar to but not the same as this original equation. It's not the same, but I can get it to be the same by factoring out a negative. So I can go to this negative 5 halves times 5x squared minus 2y squared over 2y cubed. And now, since this is the same as my original equation, I can replace that by f with 4, because 5x squared minus 2y squared is 4. So I get negative 5 halves times, it's going to be 4 over 2y cubed. Uh, this 2, this 2 are 4, we can answer that, that's 1. So it ends up being negative 5 over y cubed. And that's my second derivative. Nothing to it. This is actually a really challenging problem, um, and the second derivative, especially with hyperbolas, because I get the negative in there, becomes really, really difficult to do. So, best of luck. Um, I hope you have some help. I you know, hope you have some some success with this implicit differentiation. Generally, not too difficult. Um, well, I'll do some more in class tomorrow, and uh, hopefully help you out and clarify any any misunderstandings that you may have.